Hi everyone, Casually Avid Gamer here, and we are doing our fourth episode of our Minecraft for Beginners series. I'm really glad you guys are here. Now, as you can tell, we are not in the world we started uh, when we first began this series. Uh, that's because, well, one, I wanted to show this off a little bit. This is my uh, Let's Play world that I have on a server with some friends. And this is one of the cool things I'm building. This is a mountain monastery, and I'm really proud of it, and I wanted to show it off. And the reason why I can do that with this episode is because this episode is about a lot of just kind of little hints, tips, and tricks that don't necessarily need their own full episode to teach you guys, but uh, that I still think are really important for you to know. So with that being said, let's begin. All right, let's talk about the F3 screen now. While you're playing Minecraft, if you hit the F3 button, it brings up your debug screen. Now there's a ton of information on here. We're not gonna go over all of it. Like I said, I just want to talk to you about the stuff that's most useful, especially for beginners. So, what do we want to talk about? The first thing we want to talk about are your coordinates. So if you go down on the left side of your screen, about halfway, you'll see it says XYZ, or below it, it says block. And it, then it gives three numbers. In this case, negative 7,082, 77, negative 4130. Those are your X, Y, and Z coordinates in the game. I know I've talked, probably talked about this a little bit, but I want to do it again because it's real important. Now, those tell you exactly where you're at. So one thing I always recommend is when you're playing Minecraft, you play with either a notepad or some kind of little notepad function like on your smartphone. And then anytime you find something that's important, figure out where it is, get close to it, and then hit the F3 button and write down its coordinates. I make sure I write down the coordinates to my main base, as well as coordinates to anything I might want to use later that I just stumble across. Like there's a witch farm near here that, or excuse me, a witch's hut near here that I'm going to turn into a witch farm at some point. Light level. Light level's uh, incredibly important because it determines whether or not monsters can spawn for the most part. And actually, we're going to talk about that in a second. So that's all we're going to talk about this F3 screen uh, for now. So we are currently, well, flying in creative. Uh, I built this platform way high up in the air to just kind of help ourselves out but what we're going to talk about is monster spawning now I'm not going to go into all the details but I do want to share the primary way in which monsters spawn monsters will spawn whenever the block that they're spawning on i.e. the block for example that I'm standing on when the light level is seven or below well, how do we tell the light level? Well, the light level you can tell from your debug screen, which is F3. So I'm here on a lit side and I hit my F3. And I look, you'll see if you go down towards the bottom of your debug screen, it'll, there's a line that says light. Then right now it says 15 and then it says, gives you a number and then sky and then another number and block. The, the block lighting is the one you really want to keep an eye on because that's, that's the lighting number that determines if a, a, a monster can spawn. Now, during the day when the sun's up, if the block has direct sunlight on it, nothing's going to spawn. But when it gets dark, the only thing that's keeping monsters from spawning is the block light level. So standing in this particular, on top of this particular block, has the light level at 12, because you can see the, 12, the number 12 and then the word block there towards the bottom of it. You know, if we stand in the same block as the torch, it gives us 14, because a torch puts out 
light level of 14. The farther you get away from it, 12, 10, 8. So everywhere on this side, because you notice that anywhere we go in here, it never drops below 8. No monsters will spawn over here because it's completely lit up. On this other side, mind you, this ha this side has uh, is definitely eligible for monsters to spawn. They're not spawning right now because I have the mode set to peaceful and monsters just don't generate on peaceful. So we've got one side lit up and the other side that's dark and let's just turn off peaceful mode and you can see how having light is a great way to ensure monsters don't appear in your base. Let's check this out here. Options. Let's just crank it up to hard. And we'll see what happens. And let's just keep watching. We've, we've got a few monsters popping up there. And we may not get many more just because they're occupying the space. But you notice what we're not getting is anything in there. Sure, it's not a spectacularly exciting example, but light really does protect you. It really does protect your base. Now let's talk about getting up to and down from high places. For example, we are up here on a ledge, and that is too far to fall. If we just fall off of that, we will go splat, we'll take damage, and sometimes if it's too far, it'll, like I said, it'll kill you. So how do we get down from there? Well, there's a couple of ways we can do it. Uh, one of the ways I like to do is called a freight elevator, or the gravel freight elevator, I think I've heard it called. But uh, blocks like gravel and sand are affected by gravity in this game. So let's say we want to get down from this ledge, but we don't want to dig our way down necessarily. Um, like, actually, yeah, let's say this is a kind of high ledge we want to get down from. And there's nothing underneath us to dig our way down. So what you do is you take your gravel and again, hold shift so that you're sneaking. While you're sneaking, you cannot walk off a ledge. So I can't fall right now. If I let go of shift, I'm gonna plummet. <laughs> but uh, hold shift so you can see the edge of a block and place a gravel block there. Then watch what happens. The gravel falls. So keep placing blocks there and the gravel will keep falling until it gets up to your level and then you can just dig your way down to the ground. That's pretty, pretty easy. Then a way to I guess, ascend to a ledge that you you want to get up to is called pillar jumping. So rather than using my pick to try to carve stairs, you know, up this way, which can be problematic, I'm just going to pillar jump. So you stand kind of where you want to go, aim at the block directly below you, jump and place a block, jump and place a block. And that's pillar jumping. That'll get you up to wherever you need to go. And then you just walk on in. Those are two very, in my opinion, really good ways of getting up and down. Another good way of getting up and down is by the use of water buckets. So let's actually get some of that going. So we're up high and we want to get down there. If you place a, a water source block so it runs off the ledge, then you can just make sure you're pulling back into it, but you can ride the water down. See how that worked? You fell off, but make sure you keep directing your, your, your avatar back into the water stream so you're floating down rather than plummeting. And that slows you down enough so you don't take fall damage then a way to get back up is in Minecraft you can swim up waterfalls you just have to make sure you're leaving enough of you out so that you're not suffocating if you go all the way in you'll start uh, losing breath 
and that's no good. Uh, but you can do this way, and it takes a long time. You very slowly ascend. But you can get up that way. Now, fair warning on any of these methods for, especially for the ones for getting up, because getting up higher takes longer. If there are skeletons around, they take great joy in shooting you off of whatever pillar you've just made. So if you get shot off of this, when you get to here, you're going to take that fall damage. They can even shoot you out of the water out of the water streams. Uh, I've lost a lot of good equipment by being shot off of my method of ascension. So fair warning. But those are a couple of really easy ways of getting up and down. Okay, another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is a little sage piece of advice that is simply, if you're going off to do something dangerous in Minecraft, never take anything that you would mind losing. So if, say you've been mining for a while and you've got an inventory of a bunch of you know diamonds and gold and redstone and all this other stuff you found and you've stumbled across a cave don't go caving in that cave unless you will be okay with dying and losing all that stuff you found because there's a good chance you might die and one of the ways to get frustrated with this game is to lose some really good resources or some pretty sweet pieces of gear. I've got, you know, great axe, great shovel, a, a pretty good bow, uh, a decent, this is an okay sword, but I still not something I necessarily want to lose. And then I've got some pretty good armor. So I don't know if, you know, this is stuff I want to lose. So when I decide to go explore the, let's say, go explore the nether, you know, or do something dangerous, go caving, explore nether, go into an abandoned mine shaft, I may not want to take all this stuff with me. As a matter of fact, I've got a set of iron armor and iron tools and, you know, less awesome stuff that I will put on and take with me. This is actually my, my nether exploration armor here. Uh, because it's iron, because I don't mind losing iron. And so none of this stuff up here, I don't mind if I lose it. You know, it doesn't matter to me. So if I fall in lava and die, or I get blown up by a ghast, or eaten by a zombie pigman, it's no big deal, because I'm not losing anything that I would be upset with losing. All right, now we're back in my uh, main base storage area, and we're going to talk about this the bed. Now, if you've watched any of my other tutorials, you know I'm a big fan of the bed, and I am I do truly mean it that I think the bed is the most important defensive item in a game of Minecraft. If you get into bed before it gets too dark out, you'll skip the entire night and no monsters will spawn. That means when you get out of bed the next morning, and walk out. You don't have to be worried about creepers uh, be hiding around corners, waiting to blow up all the stuff you've built. And that's pretty important. And I've talked about that a lot, and so I'll stop talking about that now. But the other thing that a bed is important for is when you sleep in a bed, the game sets that bed as your spawn point. So if you die, you will instead of spawning back at the world spawn, which is where you appeared when you first started your world, you will actually appear beside your bed. Now, you will only appear beside your bed if it's not blocked, so if you don't have a bunch of blocks surrounding it. And then there's one other way you won't appear beside your bed. If I sleep in this bed, that becomes my spawn point. However, if after I sleep in it, and that's set as my spawn point, I pick the bed, I break the bed and pick it back up. That spawn point's gone, and my spawn point is now the world spawn. So we are a long, long way from world spawn. So if I end up spawning all the way back there, it's a 45 minute walk to get back here without equipment. So having your spawn set is very, very important. 
take care of your beds. Make sure you've always got a bed in a safe spot. And always make sure before you do anything silly or dangerous that you've got your proper spawn point set. Okay, now you may have seen this trick in another one of my uh, tutorial episodes, but it's an excellent trick that can help a lot. So I'm going to show it in this one too. Uh, how to create an infinite water source. Now, basically when you... when there is what's called a source block of water, uh, which is basically where I just put that water. It will flow to any empty adjacent blocks. But for example, if we oops, block this off, we'll see we've just got this one source block of water. If we give it some place to run, it'll begin to run. This is still the only source block of water, and so that's the only block that can be picked up with a bucket. If I try to pick this up here or here, it doesn't work. But if I do this, we we pick it up. So when two source blocks run into the same non-source blocks, uh, when they're directly adjacent to it, it generates a, a third source block. So we've got a source block there now. And let's put a source block, if we put a source block here, it'll convert this block into a source block as well. So we do that, and you notice how everything grew still? That's because ev all the water pre pl pleasant, present, excuse me, is a source block. So if we do this, you'll see, hey, it's still a source block. Of course, if we take out the ones on the sides, it's no longer a source block. So to make an infinite water source, you really just need three source blocks. And then you can get as much water as you want by just taking from the center block. So you take water there, it automatically reforms into a new source block. So you can keep just taking from here and here, and it's fine. And that's a good source block, or a, a good source for water. Uh, you can drown the world with it if you want. Uh, I prefer uh, an infinite water source shaped like this. You put a source block there in one corner and then a source block in the opposite corner, and it converts the whole thing into a source block. Now you can grab any block out of the full out of the four, and it will always reconvert back into a source block. Whereas over here, if you grab one of the blocks on the side, you see it doesn't convert it into a source block because there's not two source blocks of water adjacent to each of these blocks. Okay, next up we are going to talk about one the classic rules for Minecraft. Two of them. One, never dig straight down and never dig straight up. And I'm going to show you why both of those can be dangerous. So digging straight down, let's go over to here and we're standing directly on this block. And so if we dig straight down, when this block disappears, we're going to fall. And if there's nothing under there, we're going to keep on falling. So if we break this, we fall. And if this were a bigger cavern, if we weren't on creative mode, we would have fallen a long way and we would have taken damage when we landed. If we had fallen far enough, we would have died. Well, if we dig straight down here, one of the worst things, lava. Lava's not good. We're on creative mode, so we're not dying. If we weren't on creative mode, we would be taking damage, damage, and by now we probably would have died. And the thing is with lava, it kills you, and then all of your items fly off of you. And since you are in lava, most of them will fall into that lava and be destroyed immediately. Now let's talk about digging straight up. Why is that a problem? Well, let's go over. You can dig straight up and you dig into a source block and it pushes you around. Uh, the water pushes you around, which isn't a big deal with you're in a little tunnel like this. But if you're on the edge of a cliff or on a ledge in say a giant cavern, it pushes you off, you take fall damage, possibly die, maybe it pushes you into the lava. Uh, although water is kind of the most benign of the reasons that you don't want to dig straight up. 
we get directly into this we fall and then gravel falls and it falls on top of you it covers you up you start taking suffocation damage which which isn't good and again that's not horrible you can just break the gravel dig it you know and and you'll be fine you after you'll take a little damage but you know that's okay but just it's kind of pointless to do that um, and if there's a lot of gravel above you and if you're stuck it could be a serious problem now for the big nasty of digging up hit that open and hey oh that's lava now lava falling on you pretty much ends in the same result as you falling into lava you die all of your stuff gets burnt away and you lose everything and that's just not good so hey don't dig straight up I'm here inside the library building at my monastery that I was showing you at the beginning and this is my current project it is completely unfinished in here well not completely I've got kind of this area done which I think it looks really good it I think this looks really cool and you know I know I said at the beginning of this that I wanted to show off you know what I was building and I do because I'm very proud of it but I'm also kind of hoping that it might serve as a little bit of inspiration because that's one of the really neat things about Minecraft. If you want to run around adventuring and hitting monsters with swords, shooting your bow and arrow, you can do that. That's a perfectly valid way to play mon uh, Minecraft. But there's also so much other stuff you can do. You can create just absolutely the just absolutely cool builds. You can do whatever you want. You can play around with redstone and and create all sorts of crazy contraptions if you want. It's really, really up to you. Minecraft is such a fun game, and I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope you guys stick with it because there, it's a very rewarding experience. So, <laughs> sorry, I've I've obviously blabbed on long enough. I hope you find these the tips and tricks we talked about today. I hope you find them helpful. I hope you maybe even get a little bit of inspiration out of, of what you're seeing in my Let's Play world. And I hope you guys just have a great week, have a great time Minecrafting, and we'll talk to you later.